before we go right into the other debate that was uh, an Abbotsford writing mission, or Abbotsford mission writing, sorry, at the Christian Christian Life Community Church, sorry, um, off of Stratton Road, or Straden, or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I also went to the Transit Council meeting debate, or candidate debate, debate, which is about public transit. That was pretty good, so I just have a few pictures to start off. Uh, I'm just going to blabber about it for a little bit, the transit debate. Uh, it was pretty good. There, there was a few things that I find, like, there could have been better answers. Uh, I believe that... Uh, someone from the Excalibur right or Excalibur party should have been invited to that even though they're invited to the salmon habitat or whatever it so be at this on the same day in Vancouver I, I just believe that like you know I, I am working pretty close to Excalibur party but I am not you know I, I'm nonpartisan. it's just those are the only people that will pretty much you know, take me somewhere. Which, thanks again, Excalibur right, or Excalibur Party. I don't know why I'm saying Excalibur writing. Excalibur Party for lending the rides, taking me to the events, uh, letting me interview you, etc., etc. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the 14th, but anyway, back to the transit debate. Um, I don't really want to bash any of the parties, but I felt that uh, the NDP kind of has the same spiel that they always do from the website, no offense, but I, I, I wanted to see more of their own opinions. They had a couple good opinions, I'll give them that. I, I don't want to be totally against the NDP, but I'm just saying they could have developed their own opinions a little bit better, like instead of just using the party platform. I mean, the party platform's good if you're talking about the whole province, but when you're talking about ridings and certain cities and stuff like that, like your own writing, then maybe direct more towards that writing instead of talking. I, I get that each writing makes up the whole, but each writing has its own individual problems, right? So you can't just look at one issue and say, hey, we'll just leave that. Instead, we'll talk about the province. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I can be any more uh, clear about that. Uh, for the liberals, uh, they had a lot of good answers. Um, for the transit debate, I noticed that at the transit debate, uh, the liberals actually focused on their points, and they didn't actually go, uh, you know, they didn't attack the NDP as often, uh, as they did at this debate, and I think there's a couple things that you'll point out, but the second half showed that much more. Uh, yeah, I guess that's really it about that, except for I'll go finish off with the rest of the party's conservative. Uh, which is Dwayne, I have his business card, I'll, I'll put the link, or I'll, I'll put the candidate links in each, so you guys can see, and like, the website links, and etc, because I forget his last name, sorry Dwayne, uh, but he used to work for Adobe Reader, uh, I'm not sure if he developed Adobe Reader, or if he was just part of the team, so don't take my word for, uh, what he participated in for Adobe. We also had Green Party leader Stirk, Kelly Curry Stirk, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, like I said, there will be links in the description. This was weeks ago, so I can't even remember. Uh, she made a lot of good points, uh, some of her points were mostly to do with the, uh, let's see, I think it was chlorination and carbon and etc. She was saying uh, stuff like people need to carpool more instead of driving. So things like that. I really wish I could have filmed it but I honestly couldn't because well the room's really small and there's about a hundred people in there give or take uh, and the actual media like I don't know I, I'm guessing they're CBC Global those general people, uh, they had way better spots to film than I could ever possibly get. Uh, I took a picture, you guys can see kind of where I was standing from and etc. I would have filmed from there, but there's people coughing and sneezing and talking amongst themselves and I felt that would be inappropriate to get them in there kind of thing. 
Uh, so I didn't film it. I, I took a couple of pictures, which is going to pop up pretty soon. Uh, also for, where am I? Transit meeting, transit meeting. There's a 17 year old who asked a good question. I can't remember what that was, but hopefully you'll see this video and comment or message me and I'll put it in the video later or I'll make a new video all about it. Uh, also, Excalibur Party, once again, thank you for taking me out to the transit meeting. Uh, Marcus Halliday, I would submission already. Uh, yeah, that's actually a big thing because, you know, gas costs a lot, so the fact that he's letting me carpool with him, like, with him and his father, his father attended the Salmon Habitat, or Salmon Research, or whatever, debate, conference, whatever it was, presentation, I think it was. Uh, thanks again. Let's see. I believe that's it, so we're just gonna go into the debate, like I said, uh, the debate, I ran out of battery, I'm planning on buying more batteries, cause I wanna get the whole debate. Yeah, if it cuts short on some of the questions and stuff, uh, it's because I forgot to turn off the setting for my camera that has the 12 minutes recording time, or 13 or whatever, and then it shuts off. I don't know who put that on, whoever used the camera last in my household, uh, Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> and, yeah. So, enjoy, I suppose. I, I also calculated, though, uh, when I got to the 10 minute spot, I stopped recording and then started it again so that way it wouldn't cut off the person too short, like it did the first time, because I totally forgot that there's a possibility that someone put that on. I don't know why they do it, they don't even use the video. Anyway, go ahead and watch. Before we actually start the debate, I just wanted to say the candidates' names from left to right, as well as the moderator. Sorry, but I forgot the people on the floor's names. Uh, left to right, we have Preet Rai of the NDP. Next to him is Don Stahl of the Conservatives. Next to him is Roman Bojkas, Independent. Sorry if I butchered your name. Next to him is Simon Gibson. Liberal Party. Next to him is Erd Flavel, or Er Flavel, sorry if I butchered your name, of the Green Party. Next to him we have Wendy Bales, Independent, and next to her is Marcus Halliday of the Excalibur Party. Uh, the moderator, once again, if I haven't stated it, I'm sorry, was Douglas McAdams. And I did not get a shot of him because of the camera angle. Now let's go right into the debate. The Fraser Valley Inland Canadian Business Association, I'm a director there, and to the Real Estate Board, I, I'm quite proud of that. Uh, I'm a director there because I'm a community volunteer and I have grade 11 of Javi, which probably you guys don't really care about the world. I'm also a conservative, I'm a lifelong conservative, I've always worked with conservative parties. I've worked on the last two uh, BC Liberal uh, 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 campaigns to get elected, and I am a leading contributor, financial contributor to Ed Fass Conservative campaign for the federal government. But I'm getting worried. We got some issues that nobody's looking at. Uh, I can see that most of us have got jobs, and our society more or less works. But there's all sorts of problems that are coming out. Some of the stuff that's, that I don't think is right is that in this election coming up next week, one party with 35% of the popular vote can form a majority government. Like, what's with that? It's 35% of us vote for them and they get a strong majority. That's not right. We need some sort of democratic reform. In the last two provincial elections, we've had a referendum question for this proportional representation really complicated to try to figure out how the heck that works, but we keep knocking it back. We need to stop knocking it back, folks. If we can get that back on a referendum, a vote for it. It's a good thing for our democracy. Further with our democracy, I've got a problem with the guys over Victoria telling us what to do on the top of Sumas Mountain or the North Hatsik Valley. 
They don't know what's going on over there. It's too far away. We don't have enough local representation. I say we empower our local governments, uh, make stronger our local health boards, uh, bring education even, even more firmly into our communities so that our communities are running our society and not some distant far away place in Victoria or Ottawa. Okay, we didn't, have, we didn't have enough kids. If you're my age, we're in trouble with our healthcare system. Uh, we're, healthcare is financed on the current eight dollars, and there's way more of us than there is of our kids, and they have to pay for us as we get older. And we start using most of our healthcare dollars in our last years. It's going to be a problem, guys. We need to do something about it, and nobody's even talking about it yet. I hang out with a group called Five and Two Ministries down at Jubilee Park. Uh, mental health and addictions are a huge issue down there. I've been doing that for a long time, and I, I'm very proud of the Five and Two sweatshirt they gave me. But I can see that we're leaving mentally ill people out on the streets, and nobody's doing anything. These guys are sick as sick could be, and we leave them to sleep at our doorsteps and to have a miserable life. It is all right. Further in the conversation tonight, I'll talk about educational reform and I'll talk about global warming. Thank you. Thank you, Eric Flavel, for the BC Greens. And now, uh, Wendy Bales, independent candidate. Hi, I've lived in the riding for 38 years and worked as a self employed person in the riding as well. Um, I've been involved in a lot of different uh, community issues, starting with health care, uh, SE2, trying to stop that from going through, which was successful. But mostly like, with the health care, the erosion of health services has been a big issue, as well as emergency services. I was quite involved with that. Um, I've uh, been involved with the water watch issue of trying to save our public water and uh, also the waste to energy. I've been to a lot of uh, working forums on that, just trying to stop that from going through. Um, one of the big issues uh, that I have with current government is freedom of information and uh, integrity of, of really being an inclusive government as, uh, as far as including the people in information and also making it easier for them to be included in decisions that happen before they happen. Too often we have uh, closed door meetings that uh, information comes out and a few minutes later it's decided on. So I think that's a really big issue that we need to change. And uh, I'm running basically for change and, and trying to make things better as well. I've been working in local government. I've been uh, elected for the Fraser Valley Regional District twice. So. I have been involved in a lot of different, uh, multiple issues through my work with the Fraser Valley Regional District. And uh, I just would like to do more as an MLA, I could, would, would have a lot more ability to make changes happen on issues that we're already working on. Uh, I've also been working on the Water Act, which is going to be one of the big issues coming up as well. Uh, affordable water is probably going to be one of the biggest issues in BC in the next 20 years, I think. And one of the most important uh, things to save water uh, for the next generation. And uh, Another issue I've been working on is local job security and uh, trying to make sure that we have uh, safe jobs for people locally, basically. And just uh, try and clarify that with temporary workers and not uh, outsource jobs. Um, anyway, I guess that's it. Um, I'll uh, take any questions that you're willing to give. Thank you, Wendy Bales, Independent Candidate. And now Marcus Halliday from the Excalibur. Hello. Um, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, as far as I understand it, there's a hockey game tonight, so for those of you who are missing the hockey game, go Canucks. I'm Marcus Halliday, BC Excalibur Party candidate for Atmosphere Mission. Uh, I've worked as a flight sergeant and instructor with the Air Cadet program for six years. 
I've sat on the Mission Atmosphere Transit Committee with Simon Gibson, and um, I've also volunteered with the Salvation Army. I currently work as a manager at Walmart, and that's about all I'm going to go on the credentials now. What I would like to see in Parliament and legislature is honesty. There are too many politicians up there who are working for the golden handshake and not for you. The most important thing, I can give any prepared speech off a piece of paper, but the most important thing is that when a politician talks, it has to come from their heart. One of the key aspects of the BC Excalibur Party is we do not tow a party line. What I'm going to say here today may not represent all of the party's beliefs. I may take a different stand on the Kidder Morgan pipeline than the candidate running an Atmosphere request. There is no party line. We are out to serve you. Also, um, just a note for the BC Conservatives, you are not the only party who has openly opposed the incinerator. If you refer back to that Atmosphere News article published um, about nine days ago, I believe, if you refer back to that article, it clearly states that the BC Excalibur Party as a whole opposes waste to energy incinerator. Our professional politicians are losing touch with those of us at the lower level here, those of us who live our day-to-day -day lives. We need people who know you and who will represent you, who you can bring your problems to and that will make a difference. We need a fresh voice. We need truth, we need honour, we need justice. We need the BCA Scallop Party. Once again, thank you for coming out. Go Connects Go. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus Halliday, for the BC Excalibur Party. Uh, we now have uh, prepared questions <clears throat> from the panel. And uh, those questions will be asked uh, turn by turn by members of the panel, turn by turn to, the, to, the, to one candidate to, for each question. And uh, so uh, are we to start with you, Doris? Please, uh, uh, Doris, uh, uh, <coughs> for the Chamber of Commerce. We'll be asking the first question, Doris. Thank you. This question will be for Preet Rai. The preamble is, a significant portion of our membership is made up of small business, that is, companies with less than 50 employees. Over half of our members have five employees or less. Yet small business represents 98% of all businesses in the province and 56% of all private sector employees. We're second in the country. Small business is vital to the ongoing success and sustainability of communities across the province and the provincial economy as a whole. So my question is, what specific measures would you introduce to help small business thrive? Thank you, Doris. The NDP know and understand that small business is the engine that runs our province. The best thing that government can do is help small business thrive in a, pro in a positive and stable environment for growth. Our commitment is to tell the public and all of you what we are going to do before the election to avoid the instability that comes with surprise tax shifts like the HST. There will be no increase to small business rate or the small business earning thresholds. The NDP will work with small business and local business owners to implement the Buy BC program. Local business first for government procurement. That is what we will be doing. And uh, a couple of days ago, I was in, in Mission and uh, they started the new cash mob there. I, I'm not sure whether it's happening in Abbotsford, but that was amazing. Everybody went to a small business to buy local, and the people who came out was really good. And then so thank you. Thank you, Pete for the NDP. Uh, and our second prepared question will be put by Darcy Redekop of the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. Thank you. Uh, this question is for Don Stahl. Uh, <clears throat> the Fraser Valley Realtors are concerned about the negative impact of the property transfer tax on housing affordability. A 1% tax is applied to the first $200,000 of the purchase price, and 2% is applied to the remainder of the price. 
The effectiveness of low personal income taxes to attract and retain workers in BC is offset by the high cost of owning a home. And this is intensified by the highest provincial land transfer tax in Canada. When the property transfer tax was introduced in 1987, the average price of a home was just over $100,000 and the 2% portion of the tax was expected to apply to only approximately 5% of the home sales. Now the 2% portion is applied to more than 86% of the homes sold in BC. The property transfer tax is no longer a wealth tax. Too many hardworking people are now paying the tax on an average priced home. So the question is, are you prepared to modify the property transfer tax in order to make housing more affordable, and if so, how? In a nutshell, no. It's because right now, uh, if we cut the carbon tax, that's a $1.2 billion hit to the uh, uh, provincial coffers. Uh, the BC government gets about $48 billion in revenue. Sorry, the uh, carbon tax, that's a one point. I would be open to lowering uh, the property transfer tax once the carbon tax is phased out. And possibly on the first, you were saying the first 1%, is on the first $2,000 of a home, possibly raising the ceiling maybe to $300,000 and ease it off a little bit. But to do it all at once, um, you'd have to cut services and I would, I'm not prepared to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan Stoll, BC Conservatives. And uh, our next question uh, is from Kelly Shahal of the uh, Indo-Canadian Business Association. Falling provincial revenues and increasing costs, a greater pressure to maintain or increase government services, it's imperative that the government have a strong fiscal policy. BC currently has legislation requiring the budget to be balanced. The latest provincial budget marks a return to a balanced budget with no deficit. Question is, what is your commitment to maintaining zero deficit financing in future budgets? I have already pointed out I am only one. 85, I would not be able to seriously affect policy. Um, I'm not here to make promises that I cannot keep, nor to imply that I have the answers to all the issues. If elected, my constituents will make known to me their most serious concerns, and I will work on those. Thank you. Thank you, Roland uh, Boychuk. Our next question will be from Doris uh, Woodman McMillan. Oh, I'm sorry? Oh, thank you, yes, yes. Our first, our first intervention for the evening, pre cry NDP. <laughs> so the, uh, what I have to say is that the current uh, BC budget is not balanced. It appears the only people uh, who think it's balanced is the Liberals. Balanced budgets should be a priority of every government, and every government should strive to do it. During difficult times like now, the government should have right priorities. Stadium roofs, award shows, partisan government acts should not be the correct, correct priorities. The NDP government will, is committing to balance with the next three business cycles. And another intervention uh, from Wendy Bales. I think we have to be careful that we're not balancing the budget by selling our long-term assets. Uh, that was, I don't believe that we've balanced the budget as well. There's been a lot of deferrals of, of uh, debt and moving around with money, so I, I really don't believe that there, are, there is a balanced budget, but we also have to be careful that we don't sell off our long-term assets. Thank you, Wendy Bales. And now, uh, firstly, an intervention from Marcus Halliday. No, he's uh, decided to hold on to his intervention card. An intervention from uh, Simon Gibson for the BC Liberals. There's been some contention about whether it's a balanced budget or not. I think the point, however, is a bigger question to ask is, does anybody ever want to balance the budget? I don't see any information in the, in the NDP documents even acknowledging that that's desirable. Everybody in this room desires a balanced budget. 
We, we had, the party had, the government had an outside consultant come in, an auditor, and confirm that it's balanced. But the main point to make is, is that a goal that you want in this province? And I say, yes, it is. Thank you, Mary Gibson, be seated. And now Marcus Halliday uh, for the uh, BC Excalibur Party. Yes, balancing a budget is a priority for every party, and so it should be. However, you don't balance a budget by selling BC Rail. You don't balance a budget by selling off our rivers. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus Hellman. Uh, are there any further interventions? Uh, hearing none, uh, we now uh, return to our panel, and uh, Doris uh, Woodman McMillan has uh, the next question to pose. Okay, so this question will be for Simon Gibson. This re uh, is with respect to mental health funding. The preamble is, many of the societal concerns facing our communities, such as homelessness, drug addiction, and poverty, are rooted in mental health issues. In January 2013, the Auditor General released a report providing details of budgets for the five provincial health authorities, including Fraser Health. The report indicated that Vancouver Coastal Health Authority received almost twice the funding per capita compared to Fraser Health. With 39% of the province's population, Fraser Health receives only 28% of the funding. This allows Vancouver Coastal to spend over three times the amount per capita on mental health and addictions than does Fraser Health. So the question is, what are your plans to ensure that Fraser Health receives a more equitable share of provincial health care funding to deal with issues of mental health and addiction? Uh, thank you, Doris, for that question. It's an important one because all of us in this room value health. As a matter of fact, if you look at our 300-bed hospital and cancer center, it was the largest uh, single hospital built uh, in that cycle. Uh, in our community here in Abbotsford. So that's very significant. There's a significant psychiatric ward in there. And uh, I, I'm very encouraged by that. With regard to mental health issues, it's always more that can be done. And uh, one of the things I want to point out uh, as a personal comment, if I may, about our hospital, uh, I have some concerns about parking there. Now, I know it's not in, in Abbotsford Mission Riding, but uh, parking is, is an issue, and that affects uh, a lot of the people, people that go in there. Uh, for uh, issues relating to health and, of course, uh, mental issues as well. So our, our uh, party, our government, is committed to uh, growing that. Uh, being a father of a, a mentally disabled adult, uh, I'm very concerned about it, and I have empathy for that issue. I know I, as, as you're in LA, I'm going to work hard to improve that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon Gibson, uh, British Columbia Liberals. And we have an intervention from Wendy Bates. Uh, this is an issue that we've been working on with the Fraser Valley Health uh, Board, and uh, definitely we need to address more equity. And also, uh, a lot of the over uh, pricing of administration, I think, in the health boards. Uh, for instance, when Mission Hospital was, was a community hospital, it was one of the best hospitals, and it was in the black and it has gone downhill extremely for services since the health boards took over. I think one of the reasons definitely is the administration cost. Thank you, Wendy Bales. We have two further interventions. Uh, I think Don Stahl, Stahl was uh, a little quicker on the mark, and uh, Aird, Aird will uh, follow. So Don first, then Aird. Uh, that's the way this referee saw the, uh, <laughs> saw, saw the order. Don Saul, BC Conservatives. Talking about uh, mental health funding, the, uh, it was the BC Liberal government that about a year ago cut $60 million from BC Community Living. And in fact, they had two of their own MLAs at the time, Randy Hawes and John Van Dongen, stood up in a legislative assembly and uh, spoke out against that. And uh, I think that funding should be restored. Thank you. Thank you, Don Stahl. Eric Flavel, intervening. 
they're going to make me talk really fast. So uh, we're arguing over nickels and distributing money between different uh, health regions. What really needs is major changes, such as a single agency for mental health. Uh, we need a mental health advocate, and we should integrate mental health with our primary care services so that it's not a special thing that nobody ever talks about. Right now, we're embarrassed to talk about mental health. It should be part of our core services. Thank you, Eric Flavelle, BC Greens. Uh, any further interventions? Hearing none, uh, we now move to Darcy Redekop with the next prepared question, this one to be posed to Eric Flavel of the Green Party. Fraser Valley Realtors are concerned about the serious health and safety risks that former drug operations such as marijuana grow ops and drug labs can pose to the public. This includes mold, chemicals thrown in the backyard, electrical fires and intrusions by criminals looking for drugs, even if the property is no longer being used for drug, drug production. Realtors feel that it is important for the public to be informed if a property they could be moving into was identified as a drug operation. Unfortunately, there is no consistency across the province on how municipalities make this information available, nor is there a provincial standard for remediation of drug operations. The question is, what are you and your party prepared to do to resolve the issues of standardized reporting and remediation of former drug operations? Sympathetic with your purpose and what you're attempting to do, but as a community volunteer, I haven't missed a city council meeting for seven years, nor have I missed a police board meeting for five years. I've seen many, many of these uh, cases come before council, and most often they come before as somebody who's growing cucumbers down the basement. And that's why there's all those wires in there and why the venting's illegal and why there's mold everywhere. There's never any admission that there was a grow up down there. Our, our, our community safety team uh, goes in, gives them 24 hours notice before the inspection, they clear out all the marijuana, and there's nothing left there to identify it as a grow up, proof positive. So what you want is a pipe dream because it's just people growing carrots down the basements. Thank you, Eric Favell, for the BC Greens. <laughs> Calling for interventions, if any. Interventions? Hearing none. Uh, Kelly Shahal, uh, one of the prepared questions for Wendy Bales. A 2008 chamber report prepared and endorsed by the Ministry of Agriculture states that the economic effect of agriculture in Abbotsford is approximately one point. $8 billion per annum. This represents over 25% of the GDP of the city and provides one in four private sector jobs. Increasingly, agricultural land in the city is coming under pressure to be utilized in a wide variety of non-agricultural revenue generated uses. So the question is, what is your position on the preservation of agricultural land and the current status of the agricultural land reserve particularly the role of the Agricultural Land Commission. I think that we need to protect the ALR a lot more than we're doing. I think the uh, Agricultural Com uh, Land Commission has been underfunded and uh, they haven't been able to do the job that they were intended to. And there's been a lot of erosion uh, of development uh, coming into agricultural lands that I think we need to protect the sustainability of our local food. Uh, with climate and all different other aspects, we can't depend on other places to grow our food. We need to be more diversified here as well. Thank you, Wendy Bills, uh, independent candidate. And now, uh, Doris Woodman McMillan of the uh, Abbotsford Chamber of Commerce. Uh, one of the pre prepared questions for Marcus Hamaday of the Excalibur. This question pertains to carbon tax. The preamble is, like everyone, the Chamber is strongly in favour of working towards a clean environment. However, the carbon tax is doing extreme damage to the competitive competitiveness of many parts of the economy with little evidence to show how it is protecting the environment. The Chamber considers the carbon tax in effect to essentially be a tax on fossil-based fuels as opposed to a carbon dioxide emissions toll. Our question is, 
What is your position on the current carbon tax legislation? And what actions will your party take to reduce the negative impact on business competitiveness? I think one of the key aspects here is the carbon tax was never meant to give tax breaks to corporations. The carbon tax was meant for the research of alternative energy and promotion of alternative energy. It was also designed to promote transit. So far, it's not being used for that. The carbon tax, in essence, is a good idea, but when you bring it down to the fact that it's not being used the way it was meant to be used, it becomes another tax that increases your cost of living. Another note there would be the transit part of the tax. You pay more on your fuel, so you, your fuel is more expensive. You're encouraged to take the bus. Well, here's a question. Atmosphere to Chilliwack, what bus? There is no transit in the Fraser Valley from Abbotsford to Chilliwack. Fraser Valley Transit, we don't have a viable alternative to our vehicles. We need one before we impose more carbon tax. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus Halliday, uh, independent candidate. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I see that the panel has been provided with uh, questions that have come from the floor. And uh, I propose that what we now do is move to a series of questions uh, from amongst those that uh, are on the floor. And then we will later in the evening return to the uh, prepared questions. I, <clears throat> I encourage you, of course, to ask uh, questions. Uh, I was invited to do a wee bit of a straw poll. I, having met with some who were here this evening in the foyer beforehand, I recognize that many here are here uh, to support their candidate. Our uh, uh, family and friends and uh, campaign managers and the like. Uh, I also know from having chatted with some of those who are in the room that uh, some who are here are not affiliated with any candidate, are not here for the purpose of supporting a candidate, but are here uh, as electors uh, interested in uh, seeing the candidates and hearing what they have to say. I'm going to invite all those who consider themselves here uh, unaffiliated, uh, not a committed supporter, to just raise your hand for a moment. Well, now that's a marvelous proportion, I would say. And I do hope that a very substantial number of the questions that are in the hands of the panel and the substantial number of the questions which will come to the panel as the evening unfolds will have come from you who are uh, not uh, supported and committed can uh, to any one particular candidate. That is not to, in any way, downplay commitment and importance and the opportunity to ask a nice zinger question for not your candidate, but one of the other candidates. Go right ahead. Be my guest, but uh, uh, the evening in many ways is designed for those who uh, have come with an open mind, and I am delighted that uh, there are so many in that category here. Well, enough preamble. Uh, I think it is uh, uh, the turn of Darcy Redekop, and I'll invite you to ask the first of the questions from the, from the, from the floor to pre-try for the end evening. Uh, actually, the first question that I have is for Mr. Shaw. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, the questions are, are designated by the questioner to the candidate. Uh, proceed, Darcy. Thank, thank you. you for that correction. Uh, your party has called for the end of the carbon tax. How do you propose to fund the cleanup of our CO2 problem? The carbon tax has done nothing to reduce uh, the carbon footprint of British Columbia. In fact, it's got larger from what I've gathering from what I read on the media there. Um, at this time, I think it's more important to make uh, British Columbia more affordable to live here for families and help businesses be more competitive by, uh, by getting rid of that tax. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Stahl for the British Columbia Conservatives. And uh, we have an intervention. Eric Flavel for the Green Party. The, my wife will be tickled that I don't know what's uh, The Green Party uh, thinks that the uh, carbon tax is the quickest and most effective way 
to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we need to do something quick. I agree they aren't going down. Uh, that's because we're using too, too, too much more LNG and too much more uh, other oil products. Carbon, carbon tax, uh, boost it to 50 bucks a ton, raise it by 10 bucks a year until it's having some serious effect. Thank you, Eric Favell. And uh, Wendy Bales with an intervention, followed by Preet Rai with an intervention. I think a lot of things in the carbon tax are backfiring and actually benefiting uh, big corporations and not uh, really uh, doing what they should and clean up uh, some of the heavy polluters in industry. Also, things like the Clean Energy Act has kind of backfired as far as uh, uh, it, the hydro, the clean energy hydro supposedly is too expensive at the current rate and people are going back to wood stoves for one, as one example. Due, uh, thank you. Due to the financial mess that uh, we will be inheriting, uh, we will have to keep the carbon tax. However, the Liberal Party has been spending carbon tax as a general revenue, like building the roof on a, on a stadium that's losing money. The NDP has put in their platform that they will use the money for transit as well as to protect the environment and, 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 fund, and fund climate change. Uh, and of course, the Pacific Carbon Trust, we will be getting rid of that. Thank you, Preet Rai, for the NDP. Uh, any further interventions? Yes, Simon Gibson for the Liberals. Uh, the, the problem I have with the, the NDP's position on this, they're ambivalent. Uh, they say apparently they're in favor of it, but we're not quite sure. Uh, the other problem is with the NDP, it's revenue neutral, but if the NDP assumes this, I'm very worried that their revenue neutral status is going to be lost because there's a tax taxation boom waiting if the NDP forms government. So be very cautious. I'm not trying to be critical here, but the, the ambivalence of the NDP on the carbon tax, I think, is problematic. I think you should ask the uh, candidates. Any further interventions? Uh, our next uh, question from the floor uh, will be posed by Kelly Shahal of the Fraser Valley Indo Canadian Business Association. This question is for Roman Borcha. As a mission resident, how will you represent the Abbotsford portion of your riding? Fairness for all. Special privileges for none. I would uh, represent them the same way as I would for all my constituents. They are all uh, very great. Uh, I have family living here. Um, my daughter's a registered nurse. She lives up on Claiborne. And my son's up here in Claiborne. And I love the people of Abbotsford. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roman Wojcik, independent. Uh, and uh, our next uh, question from the floor uh, will be posed by Doris uh, Woodman McMillan. This question is for Simon Gibson. Will you commit to demanding that the Minister of the Environment remove the option for an in-region incinerator from Metro Vancouver's solid waste management plan? Yes or no? Yes, but I, I want to add something else that all three of our Abbotsford area candidates for the BC Liberal Party are united on this. And uh, that's the message we take from Fraser Valley Regional District. I'm on that board. And uh, you can count on that unequivocally. Thank you, Simon Gibson. An intervention from Don Stoll of the Conservatives. About a year ago, in April 2012, the BC Liberals said that uh, the Fraser Valley Regional District air quality experts could sit on the Metro Vancouver incinerator board and give their evidence. The Fraser Valley Regional District is completely opposed to the incinerator. It's been a year since that promise has been made. Those air quality experts have not been allowed to sit on that board as of yet. Thank you, Don Stahl, for the BC Conservatives. Any further interventions? Uh, our next question will be 
uh, from uh, Darcy Riddicop, uh, one of the questions from the floor. And this question is for Eric Flavel. How will the Green Party implement changes to welfare and social programs? Slowly. Well, once again, what we've got works or society more or less works. Anything that we do needs to be gone at in a gentle, slow manner. The Green Party thinks that the existing status is terrible, that we don't do well at all. We think of financing education and financing and getting rid of poverty as being an investment rather than being a cost. P poverty never seems to go down. It, it's all, we, we, have, we spend a fortune in taxes treating the symptoms of poverty, of treating the symptoms of mental illness, and we never fix them. We don't do anything to fix them. We got gazillions of volunteers raising money for charity for the same purpose, and the money just goes down the tubes. All the volunteers' time goes down the tubes because we don't fix it. So there's massive things to meet that need to be done, but slowly. Thank you, Eric Bell, and an intervention from Wendy Mills, Independent. I just think in issues like uh, homelessness and, and mental health and, and uh, welfare, we need to look at the bigger picture because in the end, it costs more in policing, prisons, and all kinds of other things that we have to pay for as well. Uh, to keep a homeless person uh, on the street, it, it actually could cost over 100000 in policing. So uh, I don't know the exact statistic right now, but uh, I just remember hearing that it was quite expensive for other uh, alternative measures. Thank you, Wendy Bills. Any further interventions? Our fifth question from the floor uh, will be posed by Kelly Chabal. Thank you. This question is for Wendy Bales. Uh, you were defeated in your nomination. Now, are you running on a revenge platform? Definitely not, but there are a lot of issues of electoral reform that I'd like to address. And uh, just recently, the um, Elections Canada came out with a report that said that many of the elections could be overturned if they, they, they or should be overturned. What I'd like to ask is why weren't they? But we really need to address a lot of different issues, and, and I just I'm I'm here just because I, I'm worried about a lot of different issues, and I wanted to address them. Thank you, Wendy Bales, Independent, uh, and an intervention from Eric Flavel. Wendy's position is a key point of the democratic reform that we need. The Green Party would set out rules and regulations for party candidate choosing and enforce them. And, and so that stuff like that doesn't happen, so that you can't appoint candidates. It's candidates are, uh, are chosen by a local community. Thank you, Eric Flavel. Are there any further interventions? Rand, we'll go to our sixth question on this round from the floor. Uh, Doris uh, Woodman McMillan of the Chamber. This question is for Preet Rye. Your party is claiming to balance the budget. Where are you going to get the funds to do so? It's, uh, it's on our platform, uh, if you go to bcndp.ca, it's right there. We are raising taxes in only four places. Uh, first, on uh, high income earners over 150,000, on uh, big banks by 3% if you're outside, uh, headquarters outside, 1% if you're in BC, uh, tax on uh, big corporations, as well as uh, carbon tax increase, not just on venting for oil and gas. So those are the four places where we have already said we will be raising taxes, no hidden agendas, no anything. And if you look at on where we are doing the revenue, uh, where that re uh, where that revenue is being put to use, it's also on the on the on the platform, and it shows it specifically says where we are spending the money on. <coughs> Thank you, for being here. Thank you. Any interventions? Yes, Simon Gibson for the Liberals. It's interesting if you listen to Mr. Rye, he's talking about tax increases, but nowhere 
Desi mentioned, putting people to work and the kind of work that people like and the enterprise that we want to nurture in our province. That's what BC Liberals stand for. Nurturing for enterprise, getting people to work, getting people the wonderful jobs they need, our young people, our grandchildren to work in our communities. That's what we're looking for in this province, not increased taxes. Thank you, Simon Gibson, and an intervention from Preet Rai. So again, I, I must uh, remind all of you and our friend uh, Simon that if you look on our platform, there is lots of places where we are seeing how we are going to increase job creation. First of all, the liberals cut skills training. So if you do not have skills training, how do you apply for jobs? There's so many jobs out there for which there is no, for which there is no. At the beginning of the debate, I had missed the introduction, comments, and speeches of the first four candidates, I believe. Uh, I skipped Simon Gibson because when I came in, it was halfway through, and I felt that would be uh, kind of a bad camel work. So I just skipped. Uh, I, I waited for Eric Flavel of the Green Party to start. I believe that's who was starting uh, when I came in, like about two. As well, for the last half, the last half was, like I said, better than the first half, I find. Unfortunately, I ran out of battery. Uh, there's a lot of good statements by the... By the Excalibur party, uh, Marcus Halliday, who was, who was questioned about uh, being a young candidate at 18 just about 19 in October and he answered it very well I can't remember the statement but it was pretty much uh, I guess in a nutshell you could probably say sorry if I'm wrong Marcus if you watch this video but I guess you could probably say that uh, basically hmm oh, okay yeah um, your age does not define your maturity uh, basically along those lines. I could be wrong. He did state something similar to that in my head. I can't remember. It was hours ago. But, you know. Um, let's see. There's a lot of good comments from the Green Party. Uh, Liberal Party, I felt in the last half, it, it was more evident that they didn't have very many good points and that they're mostly attacking the NDP, the NDP, sorry, the NDP, uh, directly, which I found, um, isn't very good when you're in a debate and you should be representing your party. I feel that they should have had more points for Liberal. Uh, NDP, uh, seemed to be reading a little bit too much from their script. Uh, yeah, I've got no complaints for Marcus Halliday. And a lot of you might be like, uh, well, aren't you two friends? Well, yes, but it, that's not about that. Uh, him as a candidate, I felt that he had uh, pretty good points. Uh, who was the other one? Wendy, 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 let me pick up her name one sec. Uh, Wendy Bales, sorry. Uh, she also had a very, very good points uh, there. Uh... I felt Marcus had a really good defense, but I also felt that Wendy actually knew a lot about what she was talking about. Uh, she's not just, you know, some random independent who doesn't know what she's talking about. Not saying Roman doesn't know what he's talking about. He had a lot of good points, too. I'm just saying that that's the general, uh, the general idea for most people out there that ND or independence, independence, sorry, uh, don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but I feel that Mo, or I mean, sorry, Roman, I don't know why I said Mo. Roman, uh, said a couple good things, like, uh, I think he said, I'm just the one out of 80, I can't really promise you anything, and that's out of all honesty, and I felt that was a really good point, that he's not gonna, you know, preach to you about things that he can't do. Uh, where am I? So I just went over Roman, Wendy, and Marcus. Uh, and the NDP, I think, and Liberals. Green Party. Green Party actually had 
splendid points, and I felt like they they talked a bit about uh, what was it, how we can use natural resources and et cetera like that. You know, uh, a little bit about the taxes, like the carbon tax, and how they feel it should be brought up to. Uh, to, I guess, influence people to look into other resources. I believe that's what it was. I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that. Uh, yeah, Don Stahl, he seemed kind of like the humor in the debate. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think politics actually needs a little bit of humor. So, uh, thumbs up to that, Don. <laughs> you made the audience laugh a lot. In the second half, I'm not sure if it was brought out that much in the first half. So, sorry if it's not in there. Uh... But he, he had a lot of good comments. Uh, some of them are really good. Uh, yeah, let's see. Also, I was the one that asked for Don Stahl uh, <laughs> about the you and your son going to Europe. Just to kind of... Uh, just to kind of stir things up a little bit. Uh, yes, I do know your son, so no, it's not some awkward thing. I, him and I go to school together. <laughs> I don't stalk you, I swear. Uh, let's see. I think I'll just wrap it up there, but I hope you guys enjoyed the debate. I hope it had a lot of good points for you guys. Uh, maybe to help you if you're in absurd mission writing. Hopefully it'll help you develop a vote and not just go by, you know, whoever you think because you don't know kind of thing. Like, uh, for example, some people are dedicated to liberals, and I'm not saying you don't have, like, you shouldn't be, I'm just saying, uh, just look at your candidates in your writing, because those are the ones you're going to be voting for, and decide by that, and check out their debates, honestly, go to their debates, there's enough room, I mean, the thing was only half full today, the, uh, Christian Life Community Church, or Life, one of the two, sorry, uh, honestly, show it to the debates, it's not going to harm you, and I think it actually, it's better for you, uh, but yeah, anyway, for future debates and future infos, please like, subscribe, and etc. I just want to have a little bit of feedback as well. Uh, tell me uh, how I could improve that, aside from, you know, getting more batteries and where it cuts off. Uh, and I think that's it. Also, for the cutoff at the end, I'm sorry about that. The battery honestly died. Uh, I really wish I could get that second half in, because it was absolutely amazing. Like, I mean, it was probably one of the... Like, it, it really brought out how the candidates are. Um, at the end of the thing, just to really wrap up, uh, we had people commenting and saying Marcus did really good. He's really representing his youth. He's competent and stuff like that, like intelligent. As they're walking out the door and talking to us, uh, myself and Michael Holiday, who was my ride, so obviously I would have to stand by him. <laughs> you know, just typical. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of good comments for Marcus, a lot of good comments for Wendy. I didn't really hear anything for Preet Rye, so sorry, Preet Rye. Uh, Simon Gibson, I heard some negative comments about you, and I feel you should probably know. Um, as a okay when you're part of the transit committee right you had a pretty big following and a lot of people respected you um and they can't seem to put your finger on or their finger on sorry on why you chose liberal a lot of people feel this and they feel that now that you've gone totally liberal that they just don't really want to follow i'm not going to say who but uh we could say i guess people in the audience uh, for that anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Like I said, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter at Hal Days, the same YouTube name. You could also like my Facebook page. Uh, if you have any complaints, message me. I'll, I'll honestly answer the, everything you sent to me. If you got a question for me, you can ask, or sorry, you can ask at Twitter dot com backslash hell days you could also ask through messaging me on youtube or commenting or anything like that uh also feel free to go to ask period slash dot fm 
backslash Hal Days and ask me a question directly from there. I answer right away. I got nothing to better do. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye.